We've been, how many times up here, how many questions have dealt with the issue of deficit spending, the debt out of control, and yet we have somebody saying, but would you spend more money on going to Mars, and a suggestion that we need to spend more money on space exploration. This is it, folks. That's why we have such incredible problems with our debt, because everybody's trying to be everything to all people. We can't afford some things, and by the way, going to Mars is one of them. My name is Benjamin Higginbotham, and with me is the beautiful and talented Carrie Ann, and we are the Space Vidcasters. Higginbotham. That's right. And we've got an interesting show for you tonight, and we're going to be talking about a little bit about the clip you just saw. Yes. And the, basically, should the U.S. continue funding NASA, or should we just let that go privatized and or give it to China? I mean, do we really have the money to deal with this stuff? And is that really the attitude of most Americans at this point? Which is, we've got so many issues, why are we even trying to do, why are we even trying to go to Mars? Right, right. Right, so that's going to be the main topic for the show tonight. I think it's going to be a very insightful topic. We're going to be talking with everyone in Ustream. So the banner at the bottom of your screen, that's the live Ustream chat. We're going to be interacting with everyone. I mean, it's a live show. We, the way we're, we're different because uh, we can do all that fun stuff. Well, we're just different anyway. Yeah, well, a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. So you've got space news. <laughs> we still need an open for that, man. It's driving You me realize crazy. at this point, we're never actually going to get an open. I know. It's always going to be space news. <laughs> and that's it. So I'm sorry, guys. You're just going to have to deal for a little bit. <laughs> Oh, goodness. All right. So one of the first things that I was looking at was Stephen Hawking uh, recently f was honoring the 50th anniversary of NASA, but he was asking the space exploration program to be going past the moon, like establishing an experimental base on the moon and just thinking beyond the moon and Mars and, you know, just getting somewhere and planting a little flag. Um, he said, that, quote, Spreading out into space will completely change the future of the human race and maybe determine whether we have a future at all. It will not solve any of our immediate problems on planet Earth, but it will give us a new perspective. And I'm, I think that's very relevant to tonight's conversation. Oh, for sure. And Absolutely. I, I was like, oh, that's just so perfect all the way around. So that was very timely. And uh, I, I don't know. I mean, it's not like a news news story, but I wanted to throw it in there. So I did. You know. yeah. We actually covered that live on Space Vidcast. They had live coverage of that on NASA TV, and we rebroadcast that for you again with the chat room. So that was uh, that was awesome. I mean, we had a lot of people. We got front page for that, and that was just a, a really inspirational event. It was it was really neat to see Stephen Hawking on stage. I think he blinks is how he actually gets his computer to do what he does. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was. Um, that was just an awesome, awesome experience. Uh, you know, and I realize that you can go to NASA TV and get this, but as Fox said, uh, the chat room adds a different level to the whole thing because you get to chat with people right. and talk with them and, and say, hey, you know, this is what I think. This is why he's right or this is why he's wrong. Right, so, right. You know, that, that was, uh, that it's was more really of a cool. community situation. The next one is uh, NASA and Nano... What is it? Nanosats? They're calling them nanosats. Uh, what we're talking about are teeny... Well, they're calling them small satellites. And it's just sounded funny to me because they weigh anywhere between 11 pounds and 110 pounds. And I thought 110 pounds isn't exactly tiny by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> but, you know, it, they are much smaller, of course, than your traditional satellite in general. Uh, they are specifically built let me see if i can find it here what they're calling m to m or machine to machine intelligence and which had p you can do it i believe in i you know i'm trying uh let's see i'll read it how that once built nasa plans to send them into low earth orbit in clusters to create so-called fifth generation network which involves voice over ip video and data exchange the constellation will provide a robust global space-based High-speed network for communication, data storage, and Earth observations. Sounds like kind of a, a networked mesh. Yes. Kind of, you know, just a, like almost like peer-to-peer, -peer, more, more like a hardware mesh network. So right, well, which is why they're calling it m, &M. Oh, there you go. Right. So, that seems very <laughs> cool. And I think getting us to Mars or getting us beyond, we're going to need a mesh like this so we can push the communications out there. Otherwise, we're going to have delay in trying to get that radio communication to and fro. Actually, we're going to have delay no matter what. But, you know, just well, being right. able to boost that is, uh, is a good thing. Yeah. And, yeah, they should be able to communicate. Robots should be able to communicate automatically using the M2M intelligence. Awesome. Which I just thought was cool. I believe India is launching. Is this their first satellite? That, you know... The way it was written, it made it sound like it was, but 
then I kind of got towards the bottom and it says the, of the article it says India started its first or its space program in 1963 and has since developed and put several of its own satellites into space. So I was like, well, well then why did why did this make a headline? So basically, but this was what a you're big is, big headline at the time. So what you're saying is uh, we just aired news that may not be news at all. Oh, you know what? Don't start with me. All right. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Was but, there anything of relevance in that, or is it just? Um. Yeah, there was something. Does anyone about... in the chat room even care? Oh, well, Fo- Fox has this interesting. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. Uh, let's see. The I say we move on. Cardostat two A, an all weather reconnaissance satellite, will be lifted into space on Monday morning from the some <laughs> word I can't pronounce space sure, center. Sure. Yeah. There's see, no exactly way in southern India. Really. Um. Yeah, no, okay, I have no idea why I picked this one. That's sweet. Let's keep moving. Uh, all right. Well, they care, but uh, that's pretty much all the information we have. Is right they're on. launching a satellite. They've done it before. There we go. So the next story is we're going to uh, stop global warming, I believe, is. Yeah, this was very interesting. Uh, this, uh, I, I don't even know how to explain how I stumbled upon this one. The whole concept is that... In general, of course, we're trying to stop global warming. Right. Everyone knows why. Everyone knows, you know, what we're trying to do or how we're trying. No, I can't talk tonight. I'm really sorry, you guys. <laughs> Everyone knows why we need to do this, why we should be doing this, and why we are attempting this. Yep. That's what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. So, it says, scientists got the idea for injecting sulfate particles into the atmosphere from watching massive volcanoes. When the big booms, like Mount St. Helen, go up, they throw huge plumes of sulfur-rich gunk, quote-unquote, that's what it says, I swear. Gunk, technical term. Right, into the atmosphere, and the climate around the globe can cool significantly for up to a few years. Now, the ozone layer also thins significantly when this happens. So I'm not really sure why they think, suddenly, this is such a great idea. I don't understand, because my understanding is global warming is not is actually uh, the light getting trapped in the like it can't escape correctly so i don't understand how this is actually going to uh but well i mean scientifically i mean that's just what it says okay. it just the the atmosphere the climate cools i mean you, you can't so now instead of being too hot we'll make ourselves too cold well no the whole concept is that if we do actually go forward with this and start pumping two different kinds of sulfate molecules into the atmosphere, we could lose as much as three-fourths of the ozone layer, which means we're trying to cool ourselves and all we're going to do is fry ourselves to death. Ah, now I get it. So what we're doing is bad. Yes! Ah, see, I thought what we were doing was good. No! Well, we, actually very bad. we did. We thought it was good until we realized, oh, just kidding. Yeah. So I thought that that was hysterical that all, you know... I mean, granted, not every single uh, research study necessarily comes out with the answer that you want. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they went into us thinking, oh, this is awesome. All we have to do is throw this stuff up. And then somebody was like, yeah, until we lose that really critical part up there called the ozone. (laughs) So I I just thought that that was interesting. Uh, It says the ozone loss would drop in the later part of the century to about 60 to 150 Dobson units, depending on the size of the sulfates and the severity of winters. To give you an idea, the regular quote-unquote ozone Dobson units is anywhere between 300 and 450. So that's a significant loss, Mm -hmm. very significant loss. So, yeah, they won't be doing that anymore. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Well, hopefully. You know, this kind of goes back down to my concept of it is possible for us to do more damage than good in trying to correct for global warming. Right. We need to be very careful. Um, you know, I don't think anyone really denies that we've got an issue, but right. solving that issue isn't just as simple as, you know, cut everything out or, or right. stop. I mean, you, right. we need to be very, very careful with how we how we move forward. For sure. All right, I think before we go into break, I'd like to uh, do a new segment I'm calling the Amazon Pick of the Week. The reason the Amazon Pick of the Week is good for everyone all the way around is, uh, first, it's it's actually just a very interesting book. It's The Lost in Space, The Fall of NASA, and Dream of a New Space Age. And this is not about the show of the same name, in case anybody... Lost in space? Hey, yeah, no, you know no, what? No, I just... <laughs> <laughs> the, the very first thing I lo- saw when I looked at that, because obviously it's part of the title, and I said, really? We're doing a book about Lost a TV show. No, I will, awesome. have, I will have Amazon Picks of the Weeks that are fiction, 